Hi there, I'm David, and this is German Expressionism. Expressionism had always been used in silent film, but German cinema in 1920 took to Expressionism in a big way. This was due to the success of the film The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Germany had been blockaded and isolated during the war and now was bankrupted. As a consequence, there was little or no finance for film production. Unlike Hollywood, the German filmmakers could not throw money at productions and their problems. They had to find a way to tell their stories with effect but without the cost. The expressionist approach to Dr. Caligari not only kept production costs down, but it had the immediate effect of putting the audience into the mood of the story. In this case, madness and murder. Or in Dr. Caligari's case, it's mostly madness. The expressionist sets were all designed to draw the audience into this mad world. Everything you see is mad, out of shape, out of proportion. The angles are all just wrong. It was easy for this film to get the audience into the mood of the story. That is madness, the most extreme emotional state you can be in. You must remember, this is 1920, and people had never seen anything like this before. Don't worry, as primitive as Dr. Caligari looked, the films that were to follow would have higher production values. German Expressionist films were now financially successful. Production values as a consequence began to rise. Hollywood, which controlled 80% of the world's cinema output, found themselves unable to compete against the strange and new style that was coming from Germany. Audiences were beginning to get tired of the usual fare from Hollywood. Westerns, comedies, romances and the occasional epic. They wanted something new. German Expressionism was definitely new and something they'd never seen before. One genre that they fitted into perfectly with Expressionism was Gothic Horror. Here we have someone's old basement box and an actor. The only thing making this scene scary is the light and shadow. Okay, the vampire helps. Ten years later, Universal would create Dracula, the first talkie horror film. To get the same look and feel as Nosferatu, they brought Karl Freund, the German expressionist cameraman, to take care of the production. All Universal horror films after this would follow the same style and te expressionist techniques. You can only imagine what audiences in 1921 thought of this. Yeah, it's not as scary now. But there is a creepy factor here. In 1979, 
Werner Herzog did a remake of this movie, even using the same locations and same film techniques, although I think I still prefer this version. Expressionist films continued to improve, but in 1927 Fritz Lang wanted to go one step further. German society was being torn apart as the communists and Nazis battled each other in the streets. He wanted to say something against this. He said it with a film. The city of 2026 was inspired by Lang's visit to New York. To create it, he had to use every resource available. The model used for the city was so large, it had to be built inside a warehouse. The cast was in the thousands. Whole new technologies had to be invented. Optical printing for the special effects shots, the material for the robot, all of it was all new. Gone were the cheap cardboard sets and grease paint of the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Metropolis is probably the most imitated film in science fiction. Ever wondered where they got the design for C-3PO for Star Wars? The city design was also lifted and directly copied for the film Blade Runner. Even the mad professor Rotwang's hand was copied and used by Peter Sellers for his character Dr. Strangelove. And this scene where the robot is given life was directly lifted and copied scene for scene for the universal horror film Frankenstein in 1931, starring Boris Karloff. Metropolis was German Expressionism at its height. It didn't get better than this. Unfortunately, things were going to be changing in a year's time, as in 1928, the talkies arrived. Eventually, though, they got the hang of it. Unfortunately, many skills were lost along the way. Some that still worked. Expressionist films started falling out of favor, which is strange, because the highest grossing films there were still expressionist films. Well, microphones were the least of their worries. The Chancellor of Germany was now Adolf Hitler. The Nazis were in power. If you didn't turn the Nazi line, there were only three options. Immigrate to another country, wind up in a concentration camp, or be put against the wall and shot. Seriously, there was no opposition. Who could possibly take on Hitler and the Nazis? Enter Fritz Lang. Fritz Lang couldn't stand the Nazis. He told him exactly how he felt in his film, The Testament of Dr. Mabuse. Well, like the end of the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, we're back in an asylum. Can we see where this is going? Back in 1922, Fritz Lang made a film called Dr. Mabuse de Spieler, or The Gambler. It had been a huge success for him in Germany. Basically, it was a story of a criminal mastermind. So here, ten years later, Dr. Mabuse is now an inmate in an insane asylum for the criminally insane. During his incarceration, he's been writing his memoirs, his testament, 
on how to create an empire of crime. The good Dr. Mabuse can control people with his voice, even when he's not there. Kind of like Adolf Hitler in a way. He mind controls the head doctor of the sanitarium he's being held at, and uses him to run a gang of criminals and terrorists. For all the weird imagery that you can see, at its heart, Dr. Mabuse is a film noir, a detective story. Lang had already made mm. several noir films in Germany. Spin, M, and he went on to Hollywood to make other such noir films for, the, for America as Hangman Also Die, Ministry of Fear, Scarlet Street, and Cloak and Dagger. Just as Nosferatu and De Gollum made such an impact upon gothic horror, films such as Testament of Dr. Mabuz and others, with their lighting, camera work and shadows, would set the style for film noir to come. After seeing this film, Goebbels, the head of German propaganda, had not only this film banned, but had the German Expressionist movement made illegal. This was the end of Expressionism in Germany. Well, that's it. The lunatics now run the asylum. Ein kleiner Kriminalkommissar. Nichts mehr zu suchen. Oh yeah, I love this last scene. Basically, he's tearing up his testament, but what he's really doing is tearing up Hitler's Mein Kampf.